Hello and welcome to this presentation about bioprinting created by myself and Sid. Um, starting off with some personal introductions, my name is Zalia Kiba. I'm an incoming junior at Mount Zoo High School in Minnesota, and I hope to become a physician in the future with degrees in computer science and biology, and I enjoy researching intersections in technology in the medical field. I'm also part of Youth in Government and Marching Band, and in my free time, I enjoy volunteering at my local hospital, painting, and traveling. Um, Sid will introduce himself next. Hi, my name is Sid Naretti. I'm an incoming junior at Peak to Peak Charter School in Colorado. My goal is to be an emergency medicine physician and serve the community as a potential ER director. Policy is another one of my passions, and as part of this, I'm a member of the Colorado Youth Advisory Council, where I'm currently working with state legislators on mental health and education policy. Aside from this, I also enjoy playing tennis, spending time with my friends in the mountains, and doing speech and debate. Okay, so bioprinting is where 3D printers use cells and cell compatible materials to print organs and other structures used in regenerative medicine and research. In these 3D bioprinters, layers upon layers of cells are stacked on top of one another to produce living tissue. Many healthcare providers with the help of bioengineers have been able to make large impacts across the world with the help of bioprinting. And in the context of global health, there are many clear benefits to developing and improving bioprinting technology. Bioprinting has been around since the late 1900s, but its applications have so far been limited. The 2D bioprints that were first created were not complex enough to accurately model situations, but in the 21st century, scientists discovered 3D bioprinting, which expanded the applications of bioprinting. On top of the profound impacts upon the field of global health, bioprinting and its applications in regenerative medicine can improve the quality of life for humanity as a whole. And as the world's countries begin transitioning into larger stages at the epidemiological transition model, the need for organ replacement will grow and bioprinting can help meet this need. There are many different types of bioprinting currently, but today we'll be focusing on three. One type is extrusion bioprinting. This is one of the first types of bioprinting, and in this type of bioprinting, mechanical force is used to print. Pneumatic bioprinting uses air to push out the bio ink. Pistons and screws are also some physical objects used to push out the bio ink. The only difference between the two is the shape of the object and how efficient these two objects are. Um, inject bioprinting and laser assisted bioprinting are also very similar in both how they extrude the bio ink and the density of the bio ink. Instead of a consistent strand of bio ink, smaller droplets are released, and thermal inject bioprinting uses heat to excite the bio ink and pushes out the bio ink using sizoelectric. Um, in sizoelectric inject bioprinting, it uses electricity to excite the bio ink. Laser assisted bioprinting is a bit more complicated as the energy absorbing layer tends to be metal and the donor layer um, is made of donor cells. Both of these layers were to excite the bio ink with the least amount of stress to the bio ink, which allows the printed tissues to have less damage. So how does bioprinting work exactly? There are three main stages of bioprinting. The first stage is pre-bioprinting. Pre-bioprinting is a stage where the patient's organs and tissues are mapped out using CT scans or, or MRIs, that and they also replicate the patient's cells. Then a software translates the scans into a CAD drawing that allows the bioprinter to construct the tissues using the bio ink that is mixed with other cell-compatible substances such as gelatin and hydrogels. Bioprinting is when the actual printing happens in the actual bioprinter. This is when the bio ink is pushed into the desired tissue shape or into scaffolds, which are like molds. And in post bioprinting, the tissues are processed in an incubator or bioreactor to provide stability, cell viability, tissue growth, and more. And there's two main purposes of bioprinting, one of which is for regenerative medicine. Bioprinters will help researchers better understand the different aspects of the cancer microenvironment, which allow more personalized treatments um, and there are many different types of cancer, and there are also bone grafts and organs that have been printed. But organ printing is still very difficult to do because it's difficult to replicate the vascular systems of different organs. Despite these challenges, there have been a few breakthroughs over the past few years, such as functional bladders, corneas, ears, and organ and chip technology. The second purpose of bioprinting is for research. 3D models allow scientists to understand cell and organ functions much better than 2D and animal models. 
2D models, which are currently the most common models, cause many drug treatments to fail clinical trials because the 2D models do not accurately represent the cancer microenvironment. 3D models can accurately represent um, the complexity of organ and cancer microenvironments. So now that you have a basic understanding of what bioprinting is, it's now important to consider the various pros and the cons of bioprinting and what the various current and future benefits slash disadvantages are. For starters, the main application of bioprinting in which it can do the most good is through organ transplants. But first we need to establish the need for organ transplants. In 2020, it was estimated that approximately 129,000 organ transplants happened all over the world. However, the number of people waiting for an organ transplant far outshadows this, and more than 100,000 people in the US alone are waiting for an organ transplant. It's also important to keep in mind that many of these organ transplants are life-saving operations that these people need to continue living. This establishes that there is a major need for organs, which brings us to bioprinting's applications within organ transplants. So with bioprinting in organ transplants, bioprinting allows us for faster organ transplants. And essentially people are able to get off the waiting list for, for organ transplants much faster than they would through, than through the traditional process. And this ends up saving lives ultimately. And it also progresses the overall global mission of global health because many places do not have equitable access to adequate organ transplant resources like organ, through organizations like UNOS that we have here in the United States. In addition to this, bioprinting organs has a reduced re chance for rejection. With traditional organ transplants, organs are taken from a donor body with, who is either deceased or through with some transplants like kidneys from donors who are still living. So with bioprinting, the bioprints can be made out of stem cells directly from the donor. And since these are similar cells to the person who's receiving the transplant, there's a far lower risk of rejection with this. Now, there are still a couple of disadvantages with bioprinting. One of the primary barriers to widespread effectiveness of bioprinting is barriers to effectiveness and equity within bioprinting. As Zali mentioned previously, there are current technology limits that essentially force a trade-off between cost and precision. As you can see in the table here, with some methods like inkjet 3D bioprinting, the cost is low. However, there is a lack of precision. So essentially when you have a low cost, you essentially have a low precision. And with other models such as laser assisted 3D bioprinting or LAD, there is a high cost, but also a high precision. So essentially what this does is it raises the barriers to access of bioprinting. And this leads to inequitable access to the bioprinted organ transplants. In addition to this, there's also many complexities in organ production. As I mentioned previously, there is uh, lots of vascular tissue that the bioprinters struggle to replicate. And in order to have the precision needed for a working organ, this results in higher costs and raises the financial barrier, which leads to inequitable access to bioprinting. In conclusion, bioprinting is a newly evolving technology that has the ability to completely change how we see organ transplants and many other aspects of medicine, especially within the field of global health. With this, however, it is still important to note that bioprinting is an evolving technology. And after seeing the pros and the cons, we hope that you, the watchers of this presentation, can hope to go on one day and do research and other work within bioprinting to help advance the field so it can further contribute to the mission of global health. Thank you. And we also wanted to give a special thanks to all the people who made this presentation possible. For example, Slides Cardinal, who provided with this presentation template, and also the Global Health Leaders Conference staff who have made this conference possible and given us the opportunity to present to you. Thank you.